Hi there, welcome back. Today I will show you how to create and use a 3D swing animation for transitions or title reveals. This was a request from a comment asking for a text flapping effect. In the edit page, I have a timeline with a few clips for this demo. Go to the effects panel, drag the cross dissolve from the fusion transitions to the timeline and apply the transition between part 1 and part 2. Right click the transition and choose Open in Fusion page. In the node editor, Median 1 is the outgoing clip, part 1. And Median 2 is the incoming clip, part 2. The cross dissolve transition is represented by this node group with only one dissolve node inside. We don't need it for the transition we are making today. While it's selected, Press Delete to remove it from the node tree. Select the media in 2. In the toolbar click the Image Plane 3D, Merge 3D, and Render 3D buttons. The nodes are added to the editor and connected automatically. Merge the Render 3D output with media in 1 node. Make sure the Render 3D is merged as the foreground input of the Merge node. And we see that Media In 2 now appears in the right side viewer in reduced size. Drag the Merge 3D node into the left side viewer, so we can see the Media In 2 in the 3D viewer. Select the Merge 3D node and go to the Inspector. In the Transform tab, scale up the image by 2.946 so that the image fills the entire screen. Select the Image Plane 3D node and go to the Transform tab in the Inspector. Open the Pivot section and change the Z value to minus 0.5. As we are building a swing animation, we want to move the anchor point away from the image. Move the playhead to the beginning at frame 0. Mark a keyframe for parameter rotation X. Change the value to minus 90. It seems a bit too much as we can see the back of the image in the result, we will address that later. Move the playhead to the end, which is frame 29. Set the rotation X to 0, and we have a new keyframe added automatically. Play the clip, and we have a swing down animation, which is not bad, but it's a bit too plain. Make sure the image plane node is still selected, and open the spline editor. Check the Show Only Selected tool from the Option menu to show the keyframe curves of the currently selected node. Check the X rotation to display the keyframes and click the Zoom to Fit button to fit all keyframes into the window. Press Ctrl A to select all points and press S or click this Smooth button to smooth the curve. Next, we will add a few more keyframes to give the swing some elastic effects. At frame 12, Click to add a new control point and drag it up to 30. Click to add another control point at frame 18, drag it down to minus 8. Before the curve goes to 0, add one more point of value 2 at frame 24. Now play the clip. I think this is pretty good. You can always continue to adjust the curve or add more keyframes to achieve a result to your liking. One thing that bothers me is that at the beginning, the back of the image is visible due to the over-rotating. Go to the Controls tab, expand the Visibility section. Check the back option of the Cull Faces parameter and the image is gone. Now we have done the animation of the image swinging down from the top, how about swinging up? To get the swing up effect, we can change the animation curve by resetting all keyframes to its opposite values but this is tedious and not convenient for future reuse. Instead, we will create a user control and calculate the keyframe values based on the user's election. Go back to the Tools tab, right-click the Image Plane 3D title, select Edit Controls. Enter Reverse as the new control's name, select Controls for the page where we want to show this new control. Select Checkbox Control as the input control. Click OK to confirm. Go to the Controls tab and a checkbox called Reverse appears at the bottom. 
Let's check this option. Next, go to the Transform tab. Right-click the X parameter, select Insert, Calculation First Operand. You see that the Modifiers tab is now enabled. In the Modifiers tab, the Calculation modifier is added. The keyframes are carried over to the first operand parameter. Enter equals in the second operand field to enable the simple expression. Drag a whip from the Add button, hover over the Tools tab title until it opens. Continue dragging the whip to the reverse control, release the mouse button. And we are back to the simple expression field, with the name of the reverse parameter added to the expression. Modify the expression formula, as you see on the screen. If the reverse is selected, this formula will return a value of minus 1, otherwise 1. Change the operator to multiply, this will convert the angle to its opposite value if the reverse is checked. In the spline editor, check the X rotation, and we can see two curves. The red curve is the original, and the white one represents the values after the calculation. Great, now we have completed a swing transition, but before we can save this as a macro template for use in the edit page, we need to add a keyframe stretcher to the keyframes, so that when the transition duration changes, the animation curve will also adjust properly. In the inspector, go to the Transform tab. Right-click the Rotation X parameter, select Insert, Keyframe Stretcher. Go to the Modifiers tab. Change the key stretcher's source end to 29. Stretch start to 0. Stretch end to 29. Finally, we are ready to create a macro for this transition. Go to the node editor, select all the nodes except the media in and out nodes. Make sure to select the merge one node first and shift drag to select other nodes so that it knows to link the outgoing clip as media in one and the incoming one as media in two when the transition is applied to a timeline. Right click one of the selected nodes, select macro, create macro. In the macro editor window, enter essential swing in 3D as the name. Open the image plane 3D section, check the 3D pivot Z parameter, rename to anchor distance. And also select the reverse control. In the Render 3D section, go to the Common page and check all the Motion Blur parameters. Go to the File menu and choose Save as Group. Save the macro to Fusion. Templates. Edit. Transitions, Essential Transitions folder. Close the macro editor and go back to the Edit page. In the Transitions folder, go to the Essential Transitions, drag the newly created transition to the timeline, and apply it between Clip Part 2 and Part 3. We can now change the duration of the transition, or reverse the transition. We can also enable the motion blur to make the transition more realistic. If we want to use the transition to reveal a text title, simply apply the transition to the beginning of the title. But this doesn't look like a swing, it's more like a fall and bounce. It's because the anchor is too far from the title. Reduce the anchor distance to minus 0.05. Now it looks right. Until now, we only worked on the transition to bring the image or title into the view. We also need a similar out transition to swing out a clip or hide a title. Right click the transition we just worked on and open it in the Fusion page. This time we want to swing out the outgoing clip, which is media in 1. Disconnect media in 1 and media in 2. Reconnect media in 1 to the image plane 3D node and connect media in 2 to merge 1 node. Select image plane 3D node, go to the spline editor. 
Check the first operand to show its keyframe curve. Press Ctrl A to select all keyframe points. Click the reverse button to reverse the curve. That's it, we now have a swing out transition. We can check the reverse option to change the swing out direction. Repeat the saving macro steps to create a macro into our transition template folder. Please make sure to first select the image plane 3D node, since we swapped the place of media in 1 and 2. Go to the edit page. We can now use these two transitions to create variations of swing in or out between two clips. For example, in the out transition of the first clip, change the anchor distance to positive 0.5, and leave the in-transition as default for the second clip, the result looks like a push and swing transition. In this second example, we leave both out and in-transition as default, and align the second clip with the swing out transition of the first clip, the result turns into a joined swing transition. Or we just simply apply the swing in transition to a title and achieve a nice text revealing animation. For this title swing out transition, if we set the anchor distance to positive 0.05 and combine with a clip swing in transition, the result is pretty interesting. It looks like that the text is the axis of the image swing. All right, that's all for today. Thanks for watching and see you next time.